Hey team, how's everyone going on this wonderful Thursday night? So thank you for joining me and or watching the replay. Um, tonight is a really beautiful discussion about something that we, we quite often don't hear enough about is the fact that there is certain times of which to do the certain thing that our body gets the best benefit. And when we're, we're putting our effort in and we're striving to get a result, we kind of really want to be getting 80% result for 20% effort, not the other way around. So tonight we're going to talk about this wonderful word that we are in love with and it's called our chronobiology. So first off, I want to play a really cute video from someone that um, Sage and I are probably equally infatuated with and we have both been mentored by and he is an incredible mind and, and uh, both of our mentors. Um, and his name is Dr. Cam. You will see him throughout different elements of what we do here. Sage, can you unmute yourself and just let me know if you can hear this? No. Do you want to switch share and share it from mine? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's technology working for him. Wait, what's going on? What's going on? Shut up. There we go. All right. Say you're muted, honey. I've just got to find it now. Just play some little elevator music here. <laughs> I know I sent it to you. You did scroll back about 15 scrolls. Guys, if you guys saw how much we chit chat between ourselves continuously all day long. <laughs> all of it professional, of course. Oh, totally. When did I send it? Oh, here we go. Yeah. There. And the internet is running slow at this time. So thank you for your patience. <laughs> I feel right. so much better now that I've eaten. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. This is one of the most interesting areas in... Can you hear that, Laura? ...chronobiology side of things. And I wanted to give a brief... Uh, I can hear it. I can't see it. ...in regards to nutrition. And really, chronobiology is the story of two clocks. What's very, very important is that we Better? all know, well, we may know that we have a central clock in our brain that works on light dark. So when you go overseas and you see a sunrise, your brain goes, oh, that's an interesting sunrise. It must be the start of the day. I'm going to start resetting my clock for now. This is time zero. This is when I should have woken up. And it takes a few days to get used to that, sometimes faster, depending on how you travel. Uh, but what we do know is that there's this master clock, the, S, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and it's determining what time of day it is and your general 24 hour cycle based on when the sun goes up and the sun goes down as long as you can see it. Now, obviously, if you change the light, if you give yourself lots of blue light in nighttime, like a computer screen, something like that, it's gonna extend, your body's gonna think, oh, it's still lots of light, so it must not be that late, so it's not ready for sleep yet. And this is one of the big reasons as to why people don't sleep so well, is because their sleep hygiene, the amount of light around their brain in their eyes, which are very sensitive to this, um, isn't, isn't times the way it should be. So first step by helping reset the master clock to the chronobiology in PA360 is by really making sure the right lighting is around you know, uh, and in that period so your body can wind down. And the sooner, the sooner after sun sets, the better that you can get rid of screens and get a blue light filter so you're not seeing any blue light, the better. Now what's really interesting about this is is that your food, let's say you're a shift worker, your food works on a slightly different clock. It works on a peripheral clock. And there's actually clocks in every bit of tissue in our body. There's clocks in our thyroid gland, there's clocks in our skeletal muscle tissue, there's clocks in our pancreas, there's clocks in our gut. And these are very, very much influenced by the environment. Sage, you have to unmute, honey. However, your body clock, your master clock is saying, well, that is not the time that it is right now. Why is there a difference here? I can see the gut's kind of running his own party down here. 
that is called desynchrony. Uh, and that desynchrony is absolutely vital for disease. And this is why we see a huge predominance of disease in shift workers, in metabolic syndrome, because we are desynchronizing the master clock with the food clock and the, and the pancreas and the digestive system and the thyroid for that matter. So all of this is leading to a, a miscommunication or uncomfort for the master clock that's fighting against these peripheral clocks. The beauty of PH360 is it's about what it gives you instructions on is how to, how to match the master clock with these peripheral clocks. And if you get that right, this is why timing is so powerful for bodies. And when we're talking about timing of food, Hands down, this is the most powerful thing that you can do for your client as a first step is get them eating at the right times, regardless of what it is. If you can get the right guidelines that we're going to talk about next into that as well, you're going to make a huge difference to them. There are two lots of clocks, the central clock and the peripheral clock. The central clock is the brain. The peripheral clocks is all the tissues. The peripheral clocks really interact with what you're doing and your behaviors. The central clock is very much light and dark. It's with the earth. So making them all match up is so so important to really getting a great result for your clients and i, I wanted to touch on that today because it's so vital for food uh, in all of the biotrends thank you sage no problem so dr ken uh, I, i'm sorry we couldn't see that guys like they, you could hear it but you couldn't see it but what i'm going to do is pop that into the whatsapp chat so if you want to do that pop that into the whatsapp chat um just that youtube link so people can have a look at that in their own time um so i mean ultimately the conversation is is and i've cam's used this before and i fell in love with the analogy our body's like grand central station right we have all these different trains that are needing to run on a certain schedule to be effective but if we have one train that leaves one stop even four minutes late it's going to then mean the next train will be delayed the next train will be delayed and suddenly the whole scheme the whole system will be off just by a bit and this is when the whole body falls into this um it falls off of its axis and we then open ourselves up to inflammation we open ourselves up to um dis-ease um and 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 misdirection of, of different elements of our body and these different clocks are super important so understanding that we can only do the best that we can but at the same time we want to try and work to understand and resynchronize those trains or those clocks so that our, everything is running in the right time for the better health of our entire system. So I'm going to share with you guys, hopefully successfully this time, a little something, something that we've put together that Sage, the master of, of um, these things that is good at. <laughs> Words are great tonight. Uh, so chronobiology, chrono is king. Chronobiology is something that is is just so underrated and, and it is something that's totally key to the programming and profiling that we utilize. So chrono and biology are two different words brought together. Chrono is time and biology is the study of life. So you can understand how chronobiology refers to the clock inside the body, the body clock of which our all elements of our body function best at. But it's very different for each of the different health types and for you individually as a whole. So when we get to looking at it, uh, our, we have this one clock, which mostly is called, the body clock is called the central clock. And it's roughly 24 hours. It's actually just over 24 hours. And this clock responds to light and dark. So like when you, like um, someone like Sage, she wakes up super early. Um, and if she wakes up in the night, uh, in, in the dark, when it's um, coming into the winter time, she's going to feel a little bit sluggish, more sluggish. But obviously she gave a really great example this morning about how um, even just waking up and turning the lights on can assist her in waking up. Someone like myself, I'm meant to sleep in until 8am. So I actually have myself many of sleep masks because I know that the light will greatly affect me. And a lot of our our diplomats and guardians, when they're first coming into syncing their body clocks up and becoming uh, better at sleeping in, sometimes they need something like this to assist their body from blocking out the sunlight. Because a lot of the conversations we get is that, oh, I wake up with the sun. And my answer is normally, well, then block out the sun. So that is one of the major ones that our body's affected by. By the time we go to sleep at night time, the body's starting to wind down. As soon as it goes dark, the, the, the body starts de um, 
de-acceler- unacce- de-accelerating and um, and really I wake up at five-ish and it's still dark. Yes, that's something we need to retrain your body with, Laura, is um, is getting the body to realise, especially as a diplomat, um, if you are waking up that early, it's not the end of the world, but it's really, really vitally important for the endomorphs, which is the diplomats and the guardians, to ensure that you are in as much of a slow flow and Patricia, I think it was, spoke about this the other day. The best was that she is a guardian who's the same, woke up first thing in the morning um, and she used to get up and do stuff. Whereas now through PH 360, she started actually enabling herself. If she does wake up, she'll just lay in bed. She'll lay in bed and read. So it's really important to make sure that depending on the health type as to how, uh, what your morning activity should look like, we obviously want you to sleep in as much as possible. But if that's not possible, find ways of going with the flow, keeping calm, uh, being methodical and really keeping that stress at the lower level as much as you possibly can. Then we have the per, uh, periphery clocks, which is more like uh, these ones regulate your your local tissues, tissues in your organs. So the body, certain organs are doing certain functions at certain times, right? Which is why we have as different body types, different eating times, different fitness times. So um, most of us do have a a better afternoon time to train and that's when our body, the clock, is set for our body to utilise and accept certain stimuli in a better way. It's it's able to deal with the capacity of of cortisol and stress. So everything needs to be in sync with these specific clocks and those amazing little chrono wheels that you guys have within your platform are your little clocks. So... How we time think really contributes to the genetic expression. So um, activations of the cells of the genes versus suppressions of the cells of the genes and our natural state of flow, our hormonal shifts. If you're a guardian or a diplomat and you are waking up through the night with hot sweats or um, waking up through the night with gurgling in the stomach or just waking up in general, it's something that tells us that there's a hormonal reaction going on that we need to start paying attention to. And at the moment, because we're doing a detox, it's generally quite a good sign that we need to start looking at the detox. Um, the physiological changes in the body is com- completely reliant upon those peripheral clocks and, and whether or not we are in sync or whether we've fallen out of sync. And this is what we love and this is why we really teach the Kaizen process is we don't expect anyone to get that immediately, but it's more about understanding that the closer we can get towards your specific clocks, the better your body will start to act. And even if we are only changing it bit by bit, your body will gain more and more benefit from that. So the body also responds differently to the time of day, the month and the season. So summer, autumn, winter, spring, the body will react, react. the chronobiology will be different in those times. Then yearly, so, you know, throughout um, each year, each, each phase of the moon, like all of these things completely determined how your body is responding. And then again, we have the health type. Which health type are you? And how is that health type specifically going to react to the certain times of the day and the stimuli of our clocks internally uh, based on our environment? So things like coffee or caffeine in general, um, there is actually an optimum time. And a lot of you will potentially see it within the platform that it will give you an idea that generally for all the health types between 9 and 10 a.m. is the best time when our body is actually done In the morning, the endomorph bodies are doing its hormone regulating and it's fluid regulating. So it's really important not to stimulate the endomorphic bodies first thing in the morning because it's got other things to be done, right? There's There's a clock or a train that's meant to be running at that time doing a specific thing. So if we go in and we add caffeine in there, everyone's racing around and the body goes, whoa, I don't know whether I'm meant to be in fight or flight or how I'm meant to be acting here. But if we're going to do it between 9 and 10 a.m. for most of the health types, that's when the body goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm ready for this. Now I'm ready to boot into my day. Now I'm ready to accept that stimulus and put it into the next body function so that we can actually kickstart our day and do quite well. And you will see that quite often coffee or caffeine of different um, elements will actually be rated quite high for you at certain times of the year. And there'll actually be certain times of the year where it's not rated at all. So trust in the process and know that whatever is, regulated or given to you within the shade platform is actually highly beneficial and specific to you and trust in the process because i guarantee you your body your clock your mind your energy your digestion will all benefit from it 
This is also a really good indicator. If you are having it too early and you are crashing mid afternoon or, um, uh, if you're crashing mid afternoon, it could definitely be an indicator that you're having it way too early or there's too much stimulus and stress response, stress hormone happening in the morning. Um, and also if you have it too late in the day, it could mean you're actually, if you have it too late in the day, you'll be dependent, you'll, you'll basically be putting your body in a, in a, in a shift of about three hours in the afternoon. So if you're getting any sleep problems, going to sleep, potentially you might be having some kind of a caffeine far too late, uh, a stimuli that's way too late in the day that's setting your, your clocks or your trains off of its schedule and, and causing a, a stress response later on as well. Now, these wheels are in four different sections of your platform, of your Shea Wellness app. These here are actually Sages. This is for an activator. And I think because we've got a fair few endomorphs in here, I thought it was a great contrast for everyone to see the differences because a lot of the endomorphs will have slightly similar, whereas this is a completely opposite one, which I think is really cool for conversation. So for lifestyle, you'll see here that for Sage, her daily schedule is to sleep and then get up and move first thing. She's like the first thing she's got to get up and do some movement. So, so I know that Sage goes for a lovely morning walk and she gets her breath happening. Um, and if you're ever wanting to know more information, see this button down here, it says view detailed schedule. It's actually really, really important for you to go in and have a look at that one and see what's recommended for you within that time. Then it goes into her mental activity between nine and 12, socializing between 12 and three which is, we'll come back to that, be active between three and six and be creative between six and nine, rest between nine and 10. So you can see through a day, this morning part is where it's like, oh, sorry, this, this mid, middle day um, towards the mid, towards the afternoon is when she's meant to be utilizing a fair bit of her energy. Morning's more about flow and movement, but in the afternoon, it's about being active. So if we then go into her fitness section, you can see here, it's like, wait until you're awake for her fitness. Get up and go between six and eight to the walk. Be productive. Mm, that's signaling maybe a bit of mental stimulation here. Um, focusing on your star tasks, definite mental stimulation there. Um, Post-lunch moves. So that's about moving the body and aiding in digestion. Great workout time between one and three. So if we look at these two together, lifestyle, one to three, to two to three, nap only if you need it, be active three till six. So what does three till six say here? Energy starts to drop. One till three is her best time to train. So you can see how training and for her socializing actually overlap relatively well, 12 till three. And then here we have um, one till three, great time to work out. What's Sage gonna do if she's going to work out in before COVID-19? She'd be going to the gym. What happens in the gym? You're surrounded by other humans doing the same thing. You're surrounded by like-minded, pumped up, energized humans, happy to have a chit chat or a smile or a wave while they're training out. Or you might go meet a buddy and do a training session together. So you can see how Sage looking at this, she now knows the optimum time that she's actually going to want to converse with other people is around that time while she's in the gym doing fun activity. Her energy should start to drop after that. And then she'll finish up her brain tasks and relax the mind and body and take it easy and be restful later into the day. So burning out that energy through that fitness time is going to allow her body to prepare and burn, burn off what's there and prepare to slow herself down. If you then look here at her genius, so genius represents our, our brain capacity, our amazing uh, ability to be in flow and create from a really good space. So you can see again in the morning is breathe, hence why she walks active burst, then mental work between nine and 11. This is actually when Sage and I realized between her and I, her nine and 11 actually synchronizes up with my best brain time. So for the two of us to work together and be in our genius flow is for us to go, actually, between your time and my time, this is the most ideal space for us to really get the best out of the two of us. And then I will go in and do the after flow Whereas she may start a little earlier than me, which is my sleep time, and she'll get the brunt of her stuff sorted, we'll meet, convene, create, and then I'll finish off the after flow. So when you start to look at family, friends, loved ones, and work colleagues, this sort of information is absolutely gangbusters at being able to see how you can really benefit from each other's natural flow and natural genius. 
Then we go into seeing again. So she's got 11 to one, the um, active work. So it's like, this is when I potentially would look at her doing like chores, running around town, doing the shopping, you know, stuff that's doing, um, not sitting around too much. Again, interaction between one and three. So it's reminding her, this is when she's actually going to want to be around humans because as much as activators are fiery and aggressive and fun and playful, they are actually quite in, in, introverted. So this is showing like, this is when she's actually going to be a kitty cat that wants to play. Then we come in and we go to challenge. So between three and five, this is a fitness time. Challenge, what can I challenge? How am I challenging myself? Who am I trying to beat? What am I trying to do as a task to get things done and, and use my energy? to be active between five and six again, innovate between six and eight. So this might just be getting clear about what she needs to do. It might be tottering around the house and finishing up those projects and things like that. So guys, while you're going through your wheels and your specifics, I really hope this is giving you a, a little bit of an idea of how to see the pattern of your day and the flow of your chronobiology and how best you can um, uh, transpire to to create flow and that's the biggest thing we want less stress and more flow and to get the most out of you as the individual that you are so then we come into food because it's another really important layer when are we fueling the body fueling the beast to be able to actually get that med the most out of you and if you look at this it says avoid eating between six and eight move it reminds you move between six and seven then she's having breakfast so it says get rid of some of the toxins, allow your hormone processes to happen. Now let's feed you between seven and eight. Feed you again between eight and 10, lucky duck. Morning snack again between 10 and 12. Holy moly, us endomorphs are crying. Now we've got lunch between 12 and two. This is when she's really getting a good, you can see how it's like starts. You can see, you can almost see in this, it says like little, little, little. Lunch is getting bigger by, you can, you can see how it's, it's building throughout the day, starting small, growing bigger. Afternoon snack between two and four. Potentially that would be either refueling her for a training session prior or refueling her after a training session if she needs it. Be active uh, between four and six if she hasn't already between one and three. And then dinner between six and eight. Dinner between six and eight, if she went into a view detailed schedule, it would more than likely say that's to be her larger meal and the reason for that is she's expelled all this energy through the day. It's really important for these guys to just sedate themselves um, so that their body will calm and go into a sleepy state. Because, you know, if we have a bigger meal, quite often we can get quite tired. These guys are really susceptible to that. They're meant to have small meals during the day so they can just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. The endomorph is more about having a bigger lunch, move your body, and then have a smaller dinner if you even feel like it so that we can go to sleep and allow our body because we have such long digestive tracts as endomorphs it's about allowing the body through the night time to not be overloaded so it can do all of its hormone processing at night so i really hope that's given you guys a little bit of an understanding a little bit of a clarity on those cool wheels what they mean and how you can overlace them if you find that to be um, still a little um, heavy or a little hard to get your head around, I'm more than happy to share this. I've created it. And what you can do is go through each of those wheels, each of those sections, and layer them in you. If you're not an endomorph, you'll probably have a much earlier start time than me. But this is mine. And so I went through and went, right, what does it say for my day for genius? What does it say for food, fitness, lifestyle? Now, what are the ideal tasks? What are the stuff I like to, want to, need to get done in my day? And how do these synchronize up across the pan so that I can get that task done and create my most flow for those timeframes? How can I honor my body and all the elements of the outputs so that I am kicking it? So if you find that to be desirable to assist you, let me know and I'll happily give that to you. It's a, a copy and paste kind of thing. Um, but I know that for me, I, I needed just a little bit of a, a, a clearer pattern as to how that worked for me. Um, but it's really about for you guys how we can assist you in creating the flow. So I hope I've talked your ear off there for a bit. Laurie, is there anything that you feel within your chrono, within your time frame that you have any questions, thoughts, or theories about? Also, so I can grab my breath. 
Not at the moment, she said in the comments. Awesome. Well, Sage, is there anything you feel like adding? No, I think you covered all of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and some. <laughs> Go, Shana. <laughs> Um, but just checking in with Laura, do you have, have you got your chrono sorted? Do you have it, do you live by your chrono right now? Where are you? She's, um, thing, but she's, she's in the chat. Oh, okay. Go read through all her chronos. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for everybody, if you're watching the replay, go read your chronos and have a look at where they are and just keep thinking about Grand Central Station. Do I want my trains running on time? And do I want to actually be getting 80% effort, no, 80% results for my 20% effort? Or do I feel like pushing the other way? It's very difficult on how I operate. Yeah. And you know what, guys? Look, I will be so honest with each and every one of you is that I got into PH360 and it took me a year. And a lot of the endomorph coaches, um, and Laura is an endomorph. A lot of the endomorph coaches, it can actually take us quite some time to come out of the habitual existence that we've been living for quite some time and start to create that flow and release um, the reactive state. Actually, Sage, could you share what we were talking about the other week with me and how endomorphs shift and change um, and how we, we, we go about missing the, what we had so we start searching for it in that process? I don't remember what we were talking about. You need to remind me. Oh, so it's really the, the process for myself in um, stepping into oh. my flow and trusting it. Yeah, you got it? Yes. This wasn't so much related to chronobiology, though. No, it wasn't, but it was totally relevant to the process of releasing, relinqu relinquishing the habitual way that many of us have lived under the expectations of what life and society needs to be. Yeah, so a, a, a diplomat who takes action quite quickly because they're told to just do it, get up, get moving, do it. Um, what I've found with diplomats is when they do it and they don't feel like they've considered all of the other options before they take action, while they're taking action, they also add all the other options in, which then creates quite a lot of chaos and I can't actually perform the task. So when Shana and I work together, I'm generally the one who will take the action. And so then Shana can then look at all the other options while I'm taking the action and suggest all the things that I've missed because I tend to miss them. <laughs> and so we can complement each other a lot, a lot better. Um, but something in regards to chrono, if I can share a little bit of my story in regards to chrono is I like true activative form just rejected it for a little bit uh then but i was suffering from severe insomnia because i was going to bed later and waking up later saying i was more of a night owl um similar to how a diplomat will say no i'm actually an early morning person and so once i started um adhering to the chrono and getting up earlier i, I actually started to sleep so earlier on this week, I was out of sync a little bit. I wasn't sleeping. I had to get up for a call. So I had to get up at the six o'clock. And then that night I slept and same with the next night. So if I adhere to my chronobiology, I, I sleep. Uh, I also am more productive in my training sessions. If I train in the afternoon, I used to train in the morning. And the first time I trained in the afternoon, I lifted the, my work set as a warm up set. And so if I can urge you, the thing with chronobiology, if you just get one thing moving with it and adhere to one thing, it can even just be your wake up time, you'll find that you start to step into flow. And then the other parts of the chrono will sort of start to get into sync. So that would be the major thing is to just start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely talk to Bradley about your chrono and understanding your flow. Um, yeah. And for you, actually, I mean, this is a cool conversation with bosses and whatnot, which is delightful, um, is someone like the situation you have with Brad is the factor of going, um, Brad, understand that when I come in, I need to plan and organize. So coming in and getting, yeah, so Sage, yeah, yeah. Um, so coming in and I need to come in and I need to see all the stuff then I need to create a plan and then, then to know what my day needs to look like and understand where the deadlines are, what the, what the, the structure is. Um, because a, a diplomat needs, to, it's not very good to be like 
the now do like that for a diplomat is like <laughs> can't deal with this i wasn't planning for this this is unknown so whether it's the night before or the morning of understanding there needs to be an essential planning time so that you know what your expenditure is throughout the day it's super important for diplomats and guardians then the rest of the day can go your brain will naturally kick into drive around 11 a.m and then you are in your flow so it needs to be understood that there needs to be mundane simple organizing uh clarity in the morning then you will build steam and chug along in the afternoon so because you're doing uh reception stuff it's like cool brad you're starting early in the morning that's fine why don't you guys um this is just me giving you concepts and ideas um would be oh she's got something happening um uh why don't why don't you boys get all your stuff done log what you need for me or text me or have a chat or have a banner or have a, a job task board there so that when i get in at eight or nine o'clock i can see what you guys are processing and doing then i can come in and organize it i can then do the flow and then when you guys finish i might work another hour later and finish off in my flow zone when all of you have gone away so that I can be clear about what needs to be done, set a plan for tomorrow and on they go. So sometimes in no more, like Brad's out of sync, we know that, but he's the boss and he has to do what he has to do. So you then get like the mesomorph format, like the guardian, uh, the connectors and the activators would start earlier and then our endomorph would sit somewhere here and you can see how that day would pan out where these guys would come in early and start the day off and then these guys come in and swoop in, organise, get the clarity, create the, the intricate work and seeing all of the comp working components and flow the afternoon and soldier on a little bit later to create flow for the guys in the morning. I hope that kind of helps. Yeah, yeah. the activators will come in and do everything really quickly and just get everything like race around and get everything quickly. And then a diplomat's more, more likely to get the same amount of work done at a slower but steadier pace. Yes which is great, which is really helpful for bosses to know that the, the pace that someone's likely to work at as well, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Happy to have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that gives you guys clarity and anyone who is watching the replay, which I really hope you guys will, I'm going to make sure everybody is watching the replay. Um, let us know if there, there are parts of your life that you feel like you need that kind of a discussion to understand that flow. Do you just feel like there's a part of, um, of your chronos that you just, you're in a funk with and you just can't seem to over like get over that hurdle or see a clear picture of where it fits. Um, that's our task. That's our job. And we would love to remind you that today is Thursday. So please then be on, bring those, collect them, bring them with you to Monday's call. So Monday will be 9 a.m. Go on Pokemoning. Go for gold. <laughs> These guys are the cutest family. They go Pokemoning together. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Um, so yeah, so please let us know that you guys um do animals get body types too. Well, yes, okay, so quickly we'll go on to that. So if you have a look, the top of the wheel is the connector, and the connector's token animal is the puppy dog because they're like, oh, all friendly, and they want to know what kind of a person you are. They sense it. They're very, very empathic. And then when they like you, they're like, what's going on? And you can be like, yell at them. They're like, oh, but I love you. Oh, but I love you. And then we go around to the guardian who are the, um, the bears. So they're like big, nurturing. When winter time, time comes, they hold for the famine. And then they provide for their cubs. They're very protective. They don't like to be grumpy. A bear doesn't like to be angry. But if you mess with their cubs, you are dead. Uh, then we come into the diplomats. Um, in I'm like, take Bella, my dog, for a walk. Uh, I'm like to take Bella, a dog, for a walk. Morning walk. Yeah, so the dog might like to go, oh, I like. Yeah, so a morning walk is still fine for an endomorph. Just make it more about the breath work and the appreciation. I know Bella's a little tiny dog, so I totally know that that's probably exactly what you do, which is totally fine. Um, then, yeah, the, the diplomats are the bison. So these guys stand around in the paddock and they chew and they chew and they think and they chew and they think and they chew and they think. Then 
um, you come down to the senses, the senses of the birds. They're fine, delicate, very brainy, and they're always, their senses are always on because they need to, because there's no other way they can protect themselves other than to fly the way and get out of the way of danger. Then we come to crusaders, they're a horse. Then we come into um, activators, they're a cat. Actually, I also have, we also have, we spent time over the weekend creating an amazing presentation about the different health types. And we would love to drop that into your space and have you guys um, have a look at that. It will be delightful for you all. Um, so make sure you get that one. I'll post that in the group chat and I'll also pop that in the link for the WhatsApp connection. Laura, let me know if you want to be in the WhatsApp to be able to receive things or if you're happy surfing through Facebook. Um, but yeah, guys, any questions that come up? Yes, please. Awesome. Um, anything that comes up, let me know because we're here to have these divine conversations. If tonight wasn't fun, I'm really sorry. Let us know how we can make this more fun for you um, and how you can enjoy these conversations better. Without further ado, if there's nothing else, I love you all. And um, that's all, folks. See you Monday. See you Monday. Have a good weekend. Lots of photos. Show us photos of what you're doing and what you're being and what you're having. Yeah, because I'm coming off detox, so there's going to be totally brownies. <laughs> I'm so excited. And waffles. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>